much uh, to the organizers, and thank you very much to all of you for giving me the possibility to present uh, uh, one part of my research. And uh, I suppose you read the paper, and um, uh, the presentation today is um, with you uh, to discuss the nature of urbanity in the cities of North Africa during the Ottoman era. Uh, the aim, of course, for those who knows me, uh, is to challenge established vision that tend both to minimize the capacity of local societies to create the conditions for the existence of a form of complex urbanity and to attribute in an undiscussed way urbanity in its perceived local weak from to religion. The paper here proposed, I proposed is for reevaluating the existence of an urban civic sphere in such cities, is to study its capacity in these cities to sustain urbanity and to discuss the role of religion and confessional communities in a way that avoid Orientalist reifications in all these cities in North Africa, uh, Cairo, Tripoli, Trafus el Harp, uh, Tripoli d'Occident, and Tunis and Algiers. And I don't talk o other cities, but I could take the other examples uh, like these four cities. But I choose for today just to focus on those cities. The choice here is clearly to define urbanity in relation to the existence of a civic sphere that allows the development of a form of public regulation of the urban space and the negotiated and participated access to public urban amenities and spaces. These cities were characterized by their diverse populations. All of them had Muslim, diverse Muslims, Jewish, diverse Mus Jewishness, um, Christians, diverse Christians, and other um, animist as well from uh, South Africa. And uh, these cities were characterized as well uh, by um, an access to the civic sphere through a system of governance that included the representation of confessional communities, the sources are both, uh, the sources I use, are both local municipal chronicles, Yaumiyet, Hawedis, and archives found at the central archives of the Ottoman Empire today in Istanbul, or Constantinople, Bashbak on the archive. For the sake of the present reflection, I will first focus on the element, elements illustrating the existence of an urban civic sphere, then on the role of religion, and I will finish with the consequences of this effort at reinterpreting governance on the definition of the notion of urbanity in the region. So first, reinterpreting participation and deliberation. Beyond the culturalist, culturalist prejudices that have long limited the avenues of interpretation and research, particularly with regard to the existence of civic bodies, the aim here with you is to study local society in its dimensions of complexity. To this end, while critically discussing inherited interpretative frameworks, the notion of historicity um, proposed by Artog um, in 2003 with his book in French and translated in English will be called upon in uh, I will use this, uh, sorry, our talk. And in, um, in that uh, sense, this uh, historicity allows us to articulate the search for past traces of such local instances in the sources with the identification of the successive inflections to which the interpretation of their nature have given uh, rise in various layers of the presence. So he said that there are different presentism, presentisms, plural. Thus, the Ottoman period reinterpreted medieval institutions 
and practices, and the various phases of Ottoman reform in the 19th century, reinterpreted these layers of past before colonization, mainly the French and the British, and later Italian, itself through new visions of these layers of historical past. This research starts from the assertion of the existence of a civic sphere rooted in the medieval period and during the former Ottoman uh, regime, we have different constant reinterpretations negotiated between the central power and local elites. And it's devoted to the fine analysis of deliberation and decision-making processes, practices within these bodies. So as you can see in the paper, I discuss the different uh, trend of historiography and uh, written on the so-called uh, absence of deliberative uh, uh, deliberation in these uh, societies and uh, with the current debate uh, after the so-called Arab Spring, the impossibility of these societies to um, enjoy democracy. I, critic, I, I, I made though a very critical uh, reflection uh, to this uh, different analysis of uh, deliberation in the Arab world. And uh, I wanted uh, to link the history of this uh, civic dimension to the reflection of uh, the concept and practices of deliberation uh, in Europe and in the Arab world. Why, it's, why this uh, positioning in my research? Often in this discussion in Europe, there is a perspective of an implicitly adopted positioning. To, uh, we always, when we talk about society of this region, and specifically in North Africa, we have Europe and uh, uh, with the mission civilisatrice in North Africa. So all issues of deliberative system, voting or um, decision-making processes are linked to this uh, Europe uh, mission civilisatrice, even by Arab authors. Thus, uh, in the Arab and Muslim world, scholarly studies have contributed to pointing out numerous ambiguities discussions they are now uh, uh, an issue and we discuss model of uh, uh, concepts of this uh, possible dimension of deliberative processes in Ottoman uh, period and uh, we have as, uh, as well a di discussion on uh, the notion of a citizenship citizenship of course connected with that. I wanted to, um, uh, to summarize uh, this because it was very important for me to disconstruct these uh, historiographical uh, trends. The examination of uh, archives is very important in my project is uh, to, go, to go to these uh, archives in Tunis, Algiers, uh, and Cairo, and Tripoli, and to go to Istanbul and read the archives of the period of Ottoman Empire, it's a, a really a great pleasure to, to discover that indeed there was decision-making processes, there was elective systems, there was deliberations, and uh, uh, we just have to read these uh, uh, archives and to analyze it. And the study of my research is based on this uh, municipal uh, civic chronicles, and this is very, very important because they, um, uh, they are connected to the archives I found in Istanbul. For example, if you send a petition to uh, the central power, I would not call it like that, uh, this petition is uh, written in the chronicle. They said the, the, the day X, uh, this woman sent a petition or this group of uh, uh, sh shoemakers sent a petition to the, uh, to, the, um, to the central power in Istanbul. So I wanted to, uh, to, to stress that um, all of these uh, uh, practices of uh, writing petitions, writing chronicles, uh, um, writing the decision-making uh, in this chronicle is based on uh, medieval and even ancient inst instances, institutions that existed previously 
for example, in Tripoli, Cyprus El Rab, Tunis, Alger, and Cairo, in all Arab uh, Muslim world uh, and in the Ottoman Empire, there was a system of municipal deliberation which included moments of discussion, negotiation, deliberation, and consensus building within an assembly. And this consensus building is very important to understand and to focus on it because it's not based on the majority. When you elect with the majority, you should have uh, the, um, uh, how to say, the, um, the consensus of everybody. This is very, very important, this notion. And this is where we, uh, during the Tanzimat period, the reform, this consensus uh, building uh, will be challenged. And this is why we will have a lot of crises, massacres, and even uh, a lot, a lot of uh, petitions sent because uh, there was a huge change on these processes uh, uh, within these assemblies. So uh, what I wanted to show uh, in this uh, paper that uh, uh, we have to, uh, to, to look at this uh, notion of uh, uh, ijma, uh, i.e. the process of establishing a consensus through a discussion. There were also procedures of uh, drawing lots, for the allocation of uh, functions. Although both procedures of uh, um, uh, ijma and um, Gora or Intihab, uh, this has a strategy, this it's a, a strategy for pressure on a specific assemblies in order to make possible or not a decision. And I think uh, this, it's very important to understand this institutional functioning of this civic sphere as a whole and not um, just uh, on uh, uh, one aspect. Otherwise, we do not understand. So uh, we could solve conflicts by mediation and negotiation. And how we can see it in the petitioning system? Because the petitioning system is the whole system of uh, uh, demanding justice. And uh, the Ottoman Empire was based on this notion of adalat, the justice, in order to uh, demand justice. Reflecting on the role of religion, I will be very brief um, uh, because it's very important for us. You know me and you know my research on the Hizbah. Uh, uh, this Hizbah notion is um, uh, you should have its principles, Islamic principles, but with a different uh, background, uh, Jewish background, Christian background, uh, even perhaps Roman background. And uh, it's uh, do the good and forbid the wrong. And these principles were implemented in the city at all level of the, from the individual to the collective body. And reflecting on the role of religions, uh, I didn't want to, to spend a lot of time on this Hizba because you already uh, heard me, but it's very important to understand uh, these old regime societies through these uh, precepts and the religious uh, inspiration in the different definition of profane practices and institutions. I wanted to say that even if it's a religious, the practice is uh, very secular. And I think it's very important to, to say that for redefining urbanity in the region. All of this um, is an invitation with you to redefine urbanity. The first step consists in affirming, affirming that there was indeed a dimension of urbanity in these cities of the region, not just order or disorder in the view of orientalist writers. The second step is to affirm that this form of urbanity emanated from the civic sphere, a collective regulation of the uses of urban public spaces and amenities with a dimension of participation, negotiation, and plurality. In the old regime Ottoman system of urban governance, all had access, not direct, but through the system of notability, to a form of representation that encompassed confessional communities and professional guilds. Such communities, recognized by a charter by the Ottoman of the very day of their arrival in the city of the region, were key in the definition of urban regulation, social, special, commercial, religious, economic, and in the definition of urbanity. And I finish, and my last sentence is for it with a, a kind of conclusion. It's for a contribution to, redefini to redefinition 
of urbanity in general. What reflections on cities of North Africa in Ottoman times suggest is to collectively redefine urbanity at the crossroad between features of living together in a diverse societies, participative governance, and negotiated regulation of the use of urban spaces. Sorry for being a bit late, but uh, if you want, I can come back to a specific issue that I uh, stressed and uh, uh, the sources I use, and I can talk a lot about the sources. Thank you so much. Thank you.